All right, the uh, court will call F08524, F25723, counts one and two, and F25823, each or style the state versus Ivan Jeremiah Blanche at the fourth. And uh, are you Ivan Jeremiah Blanche at the fourth? I'm actually Ivan the fourth, Jeremiah Blanchett. All right. And Mr. Blanchett, are you the same person who is charged in F-257-23 with a, uh, make sure I got this right, with two counts, the child in F-258-23 with an Hold on a minute. And an F zero eighty five twenty four with possession of child pornography. Are you that same person? Yeah. Yes, sir. Your Honor, Your Honor that's me. Yes, sir. Right. Your Honor. Mr. Blanchett, the uh, court's got some plea papers in front of it here today, and uh, I set this matter on Zoom because my understanding was that uh, you didn't feel comfortable doing this in front of a bunch of the other inmates down there, so as a courtesy to you, the court put this uh, matter by Zoom, but that's uh, your choice. You have a right to be live in open court if you wish. And uh, so that my question to you is, is do you consent to do this by using this uh, video conference? Yes. Uh, as, all right. For some reason or another, that uh, did not get signed. That particular paragraph did not get signed in the, in the Judge, plea papers. I'm I'm so used to not having people sign that while we're sitting in court. I imagine I just skipped right over it. Okay. I th think the law requires that be in writing. Um, let me look it up right quickly to make sure. It's Article 27, 18 of the code of criminal procedure yeah it says if the defendant and the attorney representing the state file with the court written consent to use the video conference thing uh, and so of course it sets forth the modes by which it must be done which we are doing including the uh, full recording and all of that so um, I guess let me send these three pages back down to the jail and uh, I'll mark where they need to be signed and uh, ask that you all get those signed and sent back to the court. Uh, Mr. Blanchett, is there someone in there with you from the um, from the jail? No, sir. All right. I'll go send these to Lieutenant Miller and ask them to call her. So we'll stand in uh, recess for a few minutes. All right, I've received the papers back signed that uh, have the consent to the use of the video from the uh, jail. It looks like this defendant signature is the one that the code is most concerned with. So, Ms. Trill, I'll send it to you for your signature after we finish I, here. I sent, uh, I signed those three pages and sent them okay. to, uh, I think to maybe you and Gloria and okay. maybe Brent too. I'm not sure. 
All right, I'll just print a second copy and put them in the play paper so they'll contain both of your uh, signatures. All right, then uh, back on the record, 257-23 counts one and two, 258-23 and FO-85-24. And let the record reflect that the issue of the proceeding by video conference at this time, Mr. Blanchett has signed that and we are uh, proceeding in that fashion. And in fact, at his uh, request, Mr. Blanchett, uh, I've got, uh, as I said, uh, plea papers in front of me from each of these three cases involving a total of the four uh, ch charges or four causes. Uh, and uh, do, does the uh, state or the court need to read aloud the indictments in those cases, Mr. Hill? We'll waive that in all those cases, Your Honor. All right. And Mr. Blanchett, the plea papers tell me that in the FO 8524, you are pleading guilty to the single count, and F 25823, guilty to the single count, and guilty to both counts, and F 25723. Are those your pleas? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Did anyone force, threaten, coerce you, or promise you anything other than your plea agreement to get you to enter your pleas here today? I mean, I felt like I didn't have any other choice but to, you know, y'all mm -hmm. stack it up well, on me if it okay. went well, any hold further. Hold on, Mr. Blanchett. Nobody decides for certain whether anything will be stacked except for me, and that's only done after a trial. We haven't had a trial in this matter. I haven't certainly committed to anything, but if you're not accepting this plea agreement of your own free will, then I'm not going to proceed any further. I'll just leave that up to you. I I, I just I don't know really what to say, Your Honor. I really don't. I mean, this whole process is uh, foreign to me, and, well, and that's know, why that's why the I the way well, the way that yesterday when I had the Zoom meeting with y'all, the way that I understood it was that I pretty much had no choice except for to either sign for the fifteen or when I go to trial that it was going to get stacked up on me and be fifty years. Well, that's all up to a jury, whether a jury would even find you guilty. And so, Mr. Blanchett, I don't think I'm comfortable accepting the uh, plea agreement at this time. Anytime I've had someone who's been um, whatever you want to conditional, I suppose I'd call it on their plea. Later on, they usually want to complain about something and I, I'm just not uh, comfortable. I mean, then I'm, with, no, I, let, let me finish. I'm not, I'm just yes, not, sir, yes, sir, your I'm, Honor. I'm just not comfortable accepting your, uh, your plea at this time. I'll, I'll let you talk to Mr. Hill if you want. I'll set this for a jury trial. I, I don't care, but I, I'm just not into accepting conditional pleas. And when somebody tells me, I mean, I suppose everyone would prefer for their case just get dismissed, but that's not, you know, normally how things work. So do you want to talk to your lawyer or what do you want me to do at this point? I can put you in a breakout room where only you and he can talk. I don't know what other choice that I have really, Your Honor. I, I don't, you know what I mean? Uh, I feel... Well, I honestly feel like that 15 years. Okay, you know, then, uh, then that's that's all I need to know, Mr. Blanchett. I, I will discard the plea papers and we'll get it set for going through the process then. So, I mean, yesterday when I spoke with y'all. Uh, Mr. Blanchett, I, Judge, I, could I, I don't. Could you put us in a breakout room for a minute? Uh, I can try. All right. Is there any way that I could do the breakout room with Mr. Hoffman? No, sir, Mr. Well, when you're represented by counsel, Mr. Hoffman can't talk to you alone. 
but all right so mr uh, hill uh, can you hear us at this point yes sir can you hear me okay yes sir i can hear you i before just before you rejoined us um and so before i go back through all this again mr blanchett had just wanted to know if he could go in the breakout room with mr huffman and i explained to him no that he's represented by counsel mr huffman by law cannot speak to him by himself and uh so um i, I don't know again it sounds like maybe y'all don't have a deal what what is your take on it mr well, it's clear it's clear my client does not want to go to trial and i don't know if it's just semantics about the you know what his options are that he wants to take the deal but you know whether or not he's i think a lot of people consider themselves that they're in a position where they have to take a deal because a trial is not going to work out and so it may just be well, I semantics. Agree with that. I mean, it's the old saying about sometimes it's time to fish and sometimes it's time to cut bait. And I can't tell somebody what to do. All I can say is either you have an agreement or you don't. And Mr. Blanchett, that's what I don't know. I don't know whether you've got an agreement or you don't have an agreement because you, you keep darting and dodging and like i said suddenly want to talk to mr huffman and i just don't know what to do i've rarely been in this situation in almost 20 years of riding one of these benches so and i apologize judge i apologize i not trying to be a pain in the butt so to speak i just uh well, I'm just asking you, do you have an agreement with the state or not? If you don't, I'm fine with that. I don't force people into this. I don't want to even for them to even think I'm trying to do anything. I'm just here to either accept a bargain for exchange or set a matter for a trial. And either one is fine with me. So you tell me whether you want me to go forward on this or not. It's hard for me to say yes because it's so much time of the rest of my life. Okay. So, right. uh, well, I want well, to. Fine. I, I want to sign a plea with y'all. You know, I don't want to go to trial. I want to sign a deal. I just feel like the deal that's been present, okay. you know, well, presented to me is. And, uh, I, and, and I, I, I heard all of that. I understand it, and that it, it is what it is. And so I will just set the matter for a trial, Mr. Blanchett. So, I mean, I don't want to go should, to trial, Judge. I well, guess Mr. Blanchett, I it. well, Mr. Blanchett, the problem with it is you keep going back to the same deal is that you don't like the deal you're taking. I would be willing to bet 99% of the people that come in front of me don't like what they're taking, but they have to make a decision whether they feel like they're taking something that is better than they would get from a jury and if you think that's the case my suggestion would be i'd take it if you don't think that's the case i wouldn't take it but this constant back and forth is it's kind of what i i guess i termed the opposite of buyer's remorse um i just stopped uh... I apologize again. I want to sign a deal, but I was only ever offered one deal. It was only yeah. ever one deal. And I, I feel like that, uh, you know, that, you know, people are able to counter and then they get offered something a little bit better. I never got that opportunity, you know, so I feel that, like that's not true, Ivan. I made half a dozen counter offers to Mr. Huffman. He just never accepted them. He did initially say he was going to try to get 20 years. 
And I told him that you would not sign for the maximum. What was the maximum? And at that point, he offered 15, and that's what I took to you. So, well, let's move forward. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Does that mean you're accepting this, Mr. Blanchett? Yeah, I'll accept it. Yes, sir, Your Honor. All right. So you've told me a moment ago that you were pleading guilty. The I've already told you the ranges of punishment. I've told you, I think when I accept your plea agreement, there will be no rights to appeal or file a motion for new trial. If you're not a citizen of the United States, you'd be deported. Are you a citizen of the United States? Yes, Your Honor. You've told me you're waiving your right to a jury trial, and then let's get to the important part. In FO 8424, the sentence would be 10 years in the institutional division with credit for any and all the time that you've got coming, that running concurrent with both of the other cases. In each of the other cases, you would receive 15 years in the institutional division, and that would be true in counts one and count two in 257. All four of those counts, all three cases would run concurrent at the same time with each other, and you would receive any and all the credit time that you've built up while you've been down there and any credit that you would build up between now and when the institutional division took possession of you. So is that the deal that you are talking about? Yes. Mr. Yes, Hill. No. All right. Mr. Hill, is that your understanding? That is, Your Honor. And Mr. Huffman is um, in the state to have any evidence it wishes to admit. Judge, the state would offer state's exhibit number one on all three cases, which includes the defendant's written judicial confession. All right. Any objection? To no objection, Your Honor. All right, then the plea papers exhibit one are admitted. I think I asked you, Mr. Hill, but we went back and forth. Mr. Blanchett certainly appears competent to me. Does he appear competent to you? Yes, sir. Then, then based upon the pleas of guilty and in the introduction of states one, the court finds the defendant guilty in each case. And as to each count, F280, excuse me, F257, best of both counts one and two count one of only in 258-23, the defendant sentenced to 15 years in the institutional division, F085-24, 10 years in the institutional division, each of those cases running concurrent with each other in the two counts in F257-23 running concurrent, credit for any and all the time that the defendant has got built up toward those sentences. This time we'll be in recess. Thank you.